Hey everyone, welcome back, and thanks for tuning in to Thumb FPV. Now today, the video that I'm going to do is the Sky Stars 4-inch long range, but I'm going to go over a little bit more in depth on the flight controller. This thing is really tiny, and there's a lot of pads on here. There's a lot of people that will look at this instantly and know exactly what it is. You guys out there that can, you know, read a flight controller with your fingertips like it's braille and just know instantly everything about it. This video is not going to be for you, but there's going to be some people that are going to get lost on this very quickly, and that's why I'm making this. So today we're going to go over the Sky Stars 20x20 F405 flight controller. So here we have the layout, this is what I have went ahead and done for you, of the Skystars F405 flight controller. Um, I just want to go over some quick specifications on it real quick. Um, it is F405 HD mini beta flight flight controller. It is DJI and CADEX Vista compatible. There are six UARTs. Uh, receivers compatible with it are TBS, PPM, SBUS, IBUS, DSM. It does have a barometer, it does have a buzzer pad, it does have a current pad, um, it has a 5 volt VEC on it uh, for 2 amps, and then it has a 2 amp 10 volt VEC on it as well with a max of 3 amps. Um, black box on it is 8 megabytes. The firmware is Skystars F405 HD. It does have 20 by 20 mounting holes on it, and the total weight of this little guy is only 4 grams. So, a lot of uh, benefits to that there, but we're going to take a quick look and go over some of the my, uh, more specific details to this board. So to cover this efficiently, I'm going to do this in sections. I'm going to start off with the top up here. Uh, as you can see, these pads in here are very, very tiny. You will need a very small tip to solder on these, so make sure that you have one. For the tap, it's pretty much a across the board thing. This is where your pinout will be if you get this in the uh, stack version with the 4 inch long range build kit. Uh, from the left to the right, it is your RX3. You have your current, signal 4, signal 3, signal 2, signal 1, your battery, and then your ground. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Now we move down over here, and it doesn't exactly show it, but if you take these 10 pads right here, and you divide them in half, the top half goes to the cam, and the bottom half goes to your VTX. That's how this is laid out. So, also in addition to this, there is voltage settings here and here for how you want to run each of these, which is kind of nice. So, these three pads here on the inside, your 5 volt, this is labeled J2, your jumper 2 pad set, and then you have your battery. So, Two different ways that you can run this. You have three pads. You have your 5 volt, your J2, and your battery for both options. Now the way that this works is no matter what, you're always going to use J2 because that's where your power is going to come in. So from there you just decide which one you want to add to it as a solder bridge to make whatever power that you want. So if you need it to be 5 volt, you're going to bridge the top two pads together. And then if you want VBAT or battery voltage, you will take and you will solder bridge your bottom two pads together. Now this, however, does not make this your power source. Okay, When you're doing this, this is simply flowing current from here to here or here to tell if you see in here we have ground J2 we have our cam for camera control our TX1 and our RX2 or TX2 RX2 and this J2 pad right here is your power pad which has whatever power that you depict over here 
So this being your camera, pretty sure that we don't want battery voltage. Some cameras can handle it, but more than likely you're going to want to use 5 volt. So we're going to use this configuration of these pads to power your J2 and that's where your camera power is going to be. This is still your ground, this is still <clears throat> your transmit, and this is still your receive. Okay, now this one is your VTX and this also has the exact same three pads on it. Now they are completely opposite of the ones from up here, which is fine, that doesn't matter. But if you're wanting to do 5 volt, again, you would take and solder bridge these two together like so. And if you want battery voltage, you will solder these two together. Most of the time, you will want, myself personally, as long as the VTX can handle it, and I prefer to pick VTXs that do handle it, I like battery voltage. So, to power my, this is J1, so our J1 right here, is how I'm going to configure these pads to get battery voltage for my VTX setup. Next to that, we have our OSD, this is our ground, this is our power, we have our TX6 right here. So moving forward to the bottom, this is kind of self-explanatory in its own little layout for the most part, um, but over here we have these three pads right here. So this is our PPM, our S bus, and our ground. And that's literally these three pads up here. I also have this labeled as top row. These pads down here are going to be your bottom row. So, depending on what you're trying to use as far as receiver, this is your J1. If you want this to be PPM, your J1 is in the middle, your PPM is to the left, and your S bus is to the right. So for PPM, we would do similar to what we did on the other side, and you're going to solder bridge these two pads together. For S bus, you are going to want to do the opposite too. Now after that we still have our ground, our 5 volt. Uh, it says 3V3 on here. You guys don't know what that is. That's your 3.3 volt. RX1 is directly below that or next to it followed by TX, 5 volt, ground, TX4 and RX4. On the second set of pads here, or your bottom row, this is where your J1 is going to be right here. So again, these pads up here, these three pads, where you did this is not going to be where you hook your receiver to. Your receiver pad is going to be down there. This just depicts how that is configured. So we have our receiver pad followed by our ground RX6, TX6, ground, we have a 10 volt pad, a 5 volt pad, ground, buzzer negative, and our LED strips. So that's how that's working right there. The top over here, um, well that's the bottom left from top to bottom is our ground, our 5 volt, our TX5, and our RX5. So I know I was trying to explain all this in the middle of building this but is literally impossible to get in there with the soldering iron and the wires and everything and get a clear picture on what exactly it is that I was trying to do so I decided to do this for you guys now I hope this clears up any questions that you might have had or if you're thinking about getting the f4 20 by 20 flight controller and you have any questions or you already have it and you're lost with what to do with it, I hope this helps you out. Uh, this is Thumb FPV. Thanks for watching this, and I'll have another video up soon. If you have any questions, please leave them in the description below.